Sarah, Kipper Zaska, and William Alt. So thanks for coming in today. Uh, you guys are the founders of Nimble Fashion and um, Celebratory because you got accepted into the Y Combinator, the biggest accelerator in the country, which is a well, that's a pretty significant achievement. We'll give you the props for that. Tell me a little bit about then how you came up with the idea and uh, what were some of the interesting milestones you experienced as you built it? So uh, William and I have been friends for a while and we were just discussing about how literally I needed a dress for an event that was that week. And um, I was just thinking, man, like, I borrowed all my friends' dresses and I don't want to go spend hundreds of dollars on the square right now. I wish I could just look at everyone's closets in Oxford and ask them if I could borrow it. And so the idea initially came off fine because I needed the dress. And uh, I told William about the idea of uh, let's start something where women can share each other's clothes. And being in the tech mindset that he is, an entrepreneurial mindset, he said, what do women have all the time? Their phones, let's make an app. Yeah, it's, it seemed like the original choice. You know, Sarah mentioned a Facebook page. Really, you know, that's kind of half-baked. You know, mm -hmm. The more I thought about it, I had some entertainment industry experience and realized that that's a problem that these women had seemingly every week. You know, a closet full of dresses and nothing to wear. Um, and, and so I really wanted to build something that you know, could do that take advantage of that at a local level and really give women access to dresses at a bigger price. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's uh, I mean, to paraphrase the business idea, essentially, um, they would, if you have a closet full of clothes, you can put that online. You establish the rate that you're willing to rent the dress to, and then people would log on to the app, say, I want to rent that dress from you, and then you two work it out offline, kind of like a Craigslist situation, and exchange the dress. And then uh, Nimble Fashion stands in the middle as the intermediary and takes a cut of the transaction and also offers insurance uh, against damage, right? Is that yeah. a fair yeah, conversation? Yeah, exactly. Um, so what were, you guys been working on that then for what, two years? So you, you pitched it in Gillespie Business Plan like, la the year before last and then you won this year. Mm -hmm. What well, what was the development like on that? So did it go pretty fast? Did you change the idea much as you built or? Well. Uh, you know, the Gillespie gave us a big uh, structural thing to see like where this business plan could go and that was like the initial competition, the first competition and then uh, we kind of had these summer plans but the development really started when uh, in fall, right? Yeah, I, it definitely, you know, that was, I guess, really this is our kind of my third or fourth mm -hmm. like technology idea um, and really yeah you were in that thing every year you were a student yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. so it, how it much wasn't... should we give you wait <laughs> it's been a couple awesome. thousand yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. so um, of course yeah it's definitely great um, but really the we learned a lot about the development last summer uh, so really it's just kind of like a beginning of year year one the idea you say is about 16 months old or mm -hmm. so but, but really didn't make any significant progress um, Really ramped up about mid fall. Got some some good developers, um, you know, who were my, my friends from undergrad, and a great designer that you know, really helped propel us forward, so, so that we could have um, and learned a lot in the fall and you know, pushed out a MVP, got on the app store, you know, all things that were pretty difficult to do with for a first time, uh, you know, kind of internet entrepreneur, uh, and then you know, in the spring we really ramped things up and, and launched at the beginning of February. Mm -hmm. What were the challenges of getting customers? Does that go easy? Um, the, the problem with any initial business is getting the customers to trust the platform. And so uh, the biggest thing that almost provided for us were all these connections that we had already established through our undergrad years. And through that, we were able to tell these women about this great idea. And uh, the biggest challenge uh, for me, um, the marketing side was actually getting the initial content mm -hmm. uh, at Ole Miss. Like, you have this dress sharing app plat platform, but where are the actual dresses? And so um, it was a process of telling them what this was and uh, how they could benefit from it. But uh, we were actually, before launch, we were able to get about a little less than 300 dresses. So uh, we had that initial uh, inventory mm -hmm. on the app so that was a challenge how many vendors was that actually so 40 women 10 women um 
What would you say? Gosh, yeah. Um, average probably about four, four to six, six items in the closet. So it's probably about okay. About forty or fifty. Okay. okay. Yeah. What was so that so any kind of got a two sided market like this? I mean, you mm -hmm. got to get the supply and then you got to get the demand. What was the big enticement to get the supply and then you got to launch and try to drive demand? And we'll come to that next. Yeah. Yeah. So Sarah, Sarah did did a lot of this, but kind of from my perspective, you know, um, the hardest part was the initial supply, and that really mm -hmm. came from our friends. Okay. Um, yeah. you know, so a lot of arm twisting. Yeah. I mean, it was it was, it was about yeah. a four or five day process. You know, so. Ask them well, that's not yeah. bad. Okay, yeah. so like Uber doesn't get its supply in five days. So yeah, that's yeah. That, that is true. <laughs> the isn't great it? thing about actually being a college student is <laughs> these people are at your disposal. Mm -hmm. You don't have to go find them. I live with them, so that was pretty nice. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. you know, they download the app, and you tell them about it, and you remind them, and then, then they up, upload a few. Um, and so that having to do that with fifty people was a lot. You know, a lot, a lot of time. I am familiar with getting so. fifty people to do things yeah. on time. It's, yeah. it's troubling. It really is. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Especially costume. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what was the struggle then with uh, demand? So now we've got we've got some people in there, and we need to get uh, lots of folks coming and actually browsing. Right. How did that How did that kick off? The demand uh, part of the app is: Do you have the choices of the sizes, the styles that people are looking for? Mm -hmm. And then the biggest thing is. Is this really going to work? If I request this dress, am I really going to get it from this app that two students and Ole Miss started? Is this a real thing? Mm -hmm. It already paid for it. Am I going to get it? So it was like this validation. And the more people that started using it, the more that app has gotten validated. So it was this kind of like consumer trust that you have to establish um, along with the inventory. So it's that was a complex process as well. Mm -hmm. And we learned a lot about the products. You know, we, we pushed out kind of our, uh, you know, our MVP in about about five weeks, um, and it really didn't explain the process much at all. It didn't, didn't have any onboarding. Just threw people into the feed with a request button, and then sent them a text message. Right? They didn't yeah. hand the app. They didn't. Uh, you couldn't message. You know, <laughs> and all we collected was their phone number. Right? It's and then, very raw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was man behind the curtain. You know, and then we. It's fine. We, it's yeah, fine. yeah. I mean, it's it's how I think how you should do any any business. Yeah. Um, you know, and unfortunately, we we timed it right with. Events in Sarah sorority, uh, and so that that was initially, I think, what, what do we have? Thirty rentals in our second week or something, which, which was yeah. really huge. You know, team morale was was up, and, and then from there we're like, okay, we're on to something, and now let's build it out and explain it so that people we knew uh, or people who were outside of our network would mm -hmm. would begin to use it. Mm -hmm. um, that, that's what we saw pretty soon after. So, um, I mean, kind of stepping off from what I had planned, long term. Do you see this as sort of still remaining a peer to peer, or do you think like there'll be sort of super users like kind of how eBay evolved, where it was, it was customer to customer, and then pretty quickly it turned into like sort of super customers who would stock and, and ship a lot of stuff? Or is it going to stay mostly peer to peer? Um, I would say the, our, our goal of the product is a peer to peer, but when you say super customers, we've already start, started to see that trend where. Um, Actually, one of our interns, um, she is one of our super users. She has over 20 dresses on the app, mm -hmm. and at least five of them are rented out every week. So mm -hmm. you see that, you know, um, people favorite her dresses the most, people request her dresses the most, and there's, uh, we have a popular feed, so those are the ones that are getting requested most. But um, it's still where she's handling the processing to the user. So it's still a peer to peer even with those yeah. power users. Yeah. Well, I just meant in terms yeah. of having a large inventory, right? I mean, so would would seem to make a lot of sense yeah. to buy people dresses maybe as they're moving out of Oxford and I'll stand there as sort of the uh, the the dry cleaner person, the safety person and I'll handle inventory. Mm -hmm. Um which would be a cool thing to do in the summer. Anyway, so, yeah. uh, but it's neat, and the advantage of being in the spot you're at is you're a little bit, uh, and, you know, you, you kind of don't care in certain respects. I mean, you don't want to get sort of a market power differences, but, you know, people yeah. start pushing 400 dresses up, great. Yeah, it, it works pretty well because the, those people are really familiar with the process and generally provide a really good experience. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they, they know they're rated, we, right? Yeah, yeah, well, we don't have ratings yet. That'll happen this, this yeah. summer, yeah. It's Version 1.0. Yeah, exactly. 1.1. Yeah, yeah, exactly. awesome. we're, yeah, we're, we're on 1.1 <laughs> now. Just, <laughs> yeah, um, so it, 
they really provide a good experience. You know, they they know that you got to te text the, the customer and, and they've got down pat. You know, here come pick it up at the union or my sorority house tomorrow. You know, like they they really and they can kind of walk the first time user through mm -hmm. uh, because our technology currently doesn't tell you a whole, whole lot. <laughs> um, we're getting better, but uh, yeah, it's always learning. Well, it's even better, right? Your customers are helping you make the sale. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, all right. So back back to my track then. So now you're going and you're going to Y Combinator. So explain kind of what that is a little bit and then explain also kind of how you got into the process of applying for that yeah um so when we i recruited one of my friends from high school david to, to be our designer initially came on as, as a contractor last december that, that was kind of the, i'll say the, the turning point in the business when uh, brought in someone who really was some ux ui experience that we really needed that was kind of, yeah yeah, yeah. That, that, that was kind of the hole in the team you know we had had the development had the marketing piece and kind of the business understanding um, but didn't couldn't create a beautiful holistic design and experience for, for our users anyway and he was from he's been living in san francisco where y combinator is and so he was the one who really pushed us to to apply uh, and, and many people in his network had been through it and, and seen the the results from that, and so about mid um, about mid spring, we just start on the application, and I really encourage anyone to apply. Uh, I'm actually writing a, a blog post about that now. Just the questions they ask are really good things that any first time um, you know entrepreneur or just business uh, owner should ask themselves. Um, so it kind of forces to confront those things and really build a plan going forward rather than kind of seeing the biggest problem and then tackling that day by day. Mm -hmm. um, and anyway, so then they liked our application and we did a 10 minute um, Skype interview and they flew us out to California. We prepared a lot for that and uh, they fired off questions for 10 minutes and then called us six hours later and said, you're in the summer batch, do you want to take the deal? And, and we were so, so excited to uh, get that opportunity. Right. So how does that work then? What is the, what's summer going to be like for y'all and what's going to happen? Sure. Um, so this, this summer we'll have weekly meetings with um, Y Combinator. That typically dinners on Tuesday nights. They'll bring in speakers and entrepreneurs, and it's a really large network of individuals who've grown and scaled businesses. Um, and they're they're very entrepreneurial focused. They give you one hundred twenty thousand dollars, ask you to move out there, and people call it the most one hundred productive days of their life. Um, and so we're we're ready to bu buckle down and try to find You're a house. You're just being busy. In Mountain View, yes, extremely, <laughs> extremely busy. Uh, you know, trying to, on our end, it's kind of tough because we, you know, our business will have some seasonality to it. You know, you, we're going to rent more dress. While we're in colleges, you know, we're going to rent dresses during the fall and the spring. Mm -hmm. um, so the summer is, is really, you know, we're going to double down on products, build a whole, whole lot, and, and also experiment in Charleston and hire campus directors to get ready to love the cannon for this fall. Mm -hmm. That's our plan. It's a good transition period, I think, from something that has gone, you know, totally amazing for us this year, and then this summer we can reflect on everything we've learned to even improve it mm -hmm. for the next year. Cool. All right. So we're going to come back and it'll be the nimble fashion school of business? <laughs> Soon enough. Just saying. Soon enough. <laughs> uh, well, William Alton and Sarah Kiprzowski. Kipper Zaska, I'll get it eventually one of these days. We're very, very proud of you. We're, we're, we're glad you guys have done so well. Um, and uh, yeah, anything we can do in the future, let us know. We appreciate well, your well. support. Yeah, that's been great. Anytime. Yeah, thank you.